Hello and welcome to Trash Arts Ticks Season 2 Episode 11 with myself Ryan, we got Sam and we got Jackson. We're also joined by a special guest today, Bella. Um, and actually, speaking of Bella, that's what we're going to be talking about. The new film that Bella wrote herself, Home is Where I Lay. So um, before that, Sam's going to take us through everything industry and then we're going to talk about the film that we've just shot this week. So without further ado, over to you Sam. Ari Lester, the director of Midsummer and Hereditary, is supposedly working on his new film. It's based on his short film that he did a couple of years ago called Bo is Afraid, which is a surrealist horror set in an alternative present. And although nothing is confirmed, there's talks that uh, Joaquin Phoenix might be involved, which uh, Joaquin Phoenix hasn't done a lot of horror films. Mm. Apart from Signs, I can't really think of much else he's done with horror. And obviously, he's perfectly suited to horror because he always plays those kind of characters that go towards the dark edge. I think like the master and, of course, you know, Joker. So, yeah, hopefully those two actually work together and that could be quite interesting. There's going to be another Predator sequel. Oh, really? Yep. <laughs> Despite the fact the last one bombed so badly, the film made by Shane Black, Dan Trechenberg, who did 10 Cloverfield Lane, is going to direct. There's not much known about it. Except from, obviously, Disney are uh, going to be more involved because it's 20th Century Fox and they own it. So, uh, let's see where that goes. Well, 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 how does that work? Because Disney own 20th Century Fox, do they still brand like horror films with Disney? Like, would it go on Disney Plus, for example? I don't know. I think it, I think it really depends on um, how where, where they take the films. Because they might go for a more... F- family friendly sort of audience so they can cross over more or some films like genre picks they just do through um just 20th century there's no fox which i think was one of the first things we ever talked about on our podcast Mm. cinemas wonder woman 1984 is going to be released on christmas day and hbo max on the same day so you can be able to go to the theater and watch it if you want to take that risk or hbo max And it's only going to be on HBO Max for literally one month, which is an interesting approach. It might work. It's also, um, a lot of people criticise HBO Max because why is it not on Roku yet? It's a slow rollout. They haven't even got an international plan just yet. I apologise, there's a cat wandering around if you heard of it (laughs) first then. (laughs) Spike Lee who recently directed The Five Bloods, my personal favourite film of the year, is to direct a film about Viagra, a musical about Viagra, about the, the birth and start of it. And obviously Pfizer are very much in the news at the moment because they're one of the fingers crossed COVID vaccine guys. But yeah, apparently he's always wanted to do a musical. He just wanted to wait for the right sort of time. And um, he's come close to musicals with Chirac. So yeah, Spike Lee's on a bit of a high right now of his career. And so it's exciting to see whatever he's planned to work on. He's on the up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And finally, Judd Apatow, one of the great comedy directors of uh, Knocked Up, uh, recently um, The King of Stanton Island, has just announced a Netflix comedy. And it's, uh, it's basically about actors in a pandemic bubble, which is like perfect, brilliant material for a comedy. And I imagine he'll probably attract some big comedy stars. It's noticeable because uh, he usually always does his films with Universal, and it's the first one with Netflix. Now, for all those ASMR fans out there, listen to the cat purr. <laughs> I should have introduced Pat. <laughs> if, if, for you guys listening, she basically stood on our table um, right by the microphone purring. She is a very attention-seeking cat. <laughs> Loves the limelight. So, guys, moving on. This, well, basically this week, we've been out filming premonitions out of... Let me start that again, sorry. (laughs) No worries, keep rolling. So guys, moving on. Um, Basically this week, we've actually been filming our latest feature film, which is called Home Is Where I Lay. Um, So what we've actually done for this, we've brought Bella in, who is the lead actress and also the writer of this film. And um, we're going to have a little bit of an open discussion as to, well, the whole filmmaking process and um, how we managed to get it done during lockdown. So guys, well, first of all, Probably a question to you, Bella. Is uh, how did you come up with the idea of the film? 
so it's a bit of a weird story. Um, at the beginning of lockdown, um, I believe a lot of people were getting at these really weird, vivid dreams and had this horrible nightmare. Um, played on my mind for weeks um, and I ended up speaking to Sam and Sam convinced me to write it into a script and that is originally how it started. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Can you give us a bit of an overview as to what the film's about? So it's a woman who has a premonition of her own death and um, it's a very surreal and abstract premonition but the little bits play into this death and it's trying to figure out whether it's real or not. So with it being in lockdown, um, I suppose, well I was on the set so I know <laughs> all the precautions and stuff were taken to make sure that um, we could do it safely under the current rules. Um, but with that probably brings a lot of other complications. So really what was the hardest day of filming for all of you individually? I know probably Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Like, to be honest with you, the very fact that crew-wise was, uh, I was directing and DOP, you were doing sound and Jack was doing sound. <coughs> it seems that I wasn't in. <laughs> <laughs> and Jack was doing some lighting and I was doing some lighting. And sometimes I was doing sound and lighting and directing and cinematography. The whole shoot was really difficult. It was the most difficult thing we've ever done. The day that broke me was today, because it rained. And being inside a car, there was no stability. Cause all this the is recorded on Friday, by the way, <laughs> just so yeah. you know. <laughs> the bumpiest of roads just caused the point where you're like, nah, I'm done. Cars, I'm are, done. cars are always really Lots difficult to shoot, yes. though, aren't they? Because like they're, they're, you've got no manoeuvrability, you can't actually see yeah. anything, you can't get interesting shots. It's just either the bog standard from the middle or you're kind of... The thing is, when you've got a bigger car, like a short film we did called Grey Haze, we had a massive car and I could actually get right in front and film the driver, which was mine. And because we had another car, I was able to get and sit in the car and get some extra shots. And because we had to minimalize crew, we didn't get to do that. But fortunately, we're gonna regroup and shoot that next week, so. I think it's one of the things as well, is when we were shooting that scene, me and Sam were in the back of the car, and it is a small car, but. It's tiny. It, it's fine, <laughs> it, it still works. You kind of make do with what you got. and. I'm trying to hold the light with one hand, hold the mic with the other while Sam's beside me and you're trying not to bump into each other and you're going over these bumps, it's like a little roller coaster. But it was fun. The thing is we had such a like awesome location, such a lovely house. But then some of the scenes like there was there's one scene which was one of the most complicated, like, as far as shots concerned, trying to design it. And it was all in the bathroom. And it became like this horrible sauna experience of just me and Bellix. We're like, all right, everyone's way downstairs. We're just going to go and shoot all these scenes. It took, it took, I don't, it must have taken a good couple of hours. Yeah. And it was yeah, so I intense. I was sat around for a while <laughs> during that scene. But it was like all those moments of having to do it yourselves and just being like, right, we've got to do it. <laughs> we're going to do it. We're going to put everything we want, every like 100% into it. Just kind of made it stronger, if not tiring mm -hmm. as fuck. <laughs> yeah, Agreed. yeah, me too. Do you tell that? <laughs> so, Jack Bella, did you have like a, a particularly hard or hardest day? Um, oh, probably leave Bella to last. Yeah. On that. <laughs> I'm not sure. It depends what you mean by mean by hard, because like I, I, in terms of like p the character and stuff, there were there were scenes that I I had to be a bit more. Um, I, I prefer being like villainous evil characters in some way and um, no. yeah playing those <laughs> play, playing those softer moments um, I found I found kind of uh, I, I found it difficult but I wouldn't say like it was hard in terms of working with everyone because we were all so like it was just such a close nice set yeah. that you know I don't feel like there's a day that I've been that I've really really struggled in, in that sense because one thing that's probably we're well aware of but maybe our listeners aren't necessarily is that we work like a really solidified unit a lot of the yeah, time yeah. Mm. and we know right we've got our roles but we can bounce off each other within them kind of environments mm. so it's like oh okay well, why don't you try this so why don't you do that and it's it flows quite nicely so even though we have a minimal crew it still doesn't detract from 
getting the work done and yeah. doing, getting it done to a high like efficiency Ev- level. everyone's doing a bit of everything and you know you don't you don't have like a, an assistant director to organize things you just have to sort of all you know know what you're doing at the same time you don't have runners to run and get things so you know you just end up having to do it yourself or, or you know someone else do it quickly while you're in a position that you can't move from because you make sure you know you. where stuff is exactly <laughs> yeah yeah just to make clear as well like we're talking there was Myself, obviously Jackson, Bella, Ryan, and a makeup artist Katie Johnson. That's it. That's <laughs> the only people that were there. So a good proportion of it were obviously eating together and just kind of like living together essentially. Yeah. It was quite nice. Mm. In a lovely millionaire's mansion. <laughs> <laughs> Not mansion. Mansion's a bit of an over expansion. But it's I nice country in, house. I slept in a millionaire's bed. <laughs> I don't know if the bed was a millionaire's bed. Still, it's the original. It is yeah. technically. Oh, yeah, I was the most. Was biggest. it better than memory foam? It was more. Like, I felt like an imposter the whole time. But then after a while, I was like, at the end of the shoot, you're like, all right, off to the big room. <laughs> Stretch on out. Private bathroom. Did you draw straws for that? No, we just we just didn't. I, I wasn't that bothered Feet about. Up. Yeah, I, I wasn't that bothered. And the, the mattress in the room that I was in just was really really soft, and it wasn't a very a, a very comfortable sleep. But you know, it was all right. I, I can function. <laughs> just so about. <laughs> what was the the hardest day for you then in terms of filming? To be honest, I haven't found anything in terms of crew hard at all. I thought this film was a brilliant example of how four people can have two lead actors and then everyone else doing all the stuff as we spoke about earlier. The hard bits I found was the fact I wrote myself outside basically naked (laughs) about four different times. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It got to a point where I was just shaking so hard. I'm like, need to play dead. I need to play dead. I felt so bad for you. I kept thinking like, I should just give you my coat wipe, but it would have ruined that. There was blood all over it as well. Mm. It wouldn't have... (laughs) I've never done that before, so it was a fine line of going, is this hypothermia or is this adrenaline? I don't know. Shock. Shock. <laughs> yes. But I didn't think I could do it. I did do it, and I am I am proud of that. Some of the stuff, just to put it into context, some of the stuff that Bella actually did, and I wasn't there for, but what I've heard in the photos that I've seen and watching the footage yesterday, that's pretty intense stuff. And, to, well, hats off, really. For, yeah, doing that. Can't complain. I did write it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, just, I didn't. You shot it. yourself in the foot. <laughs> I was like, it'll be cold, but it won't be that cold. <laughs> and here we are. It's two degrees. <laughs> I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but two degrees is pretty cold. And um, so we touched on the the location briefly. Can you expand on the location a little bit more? Because obviously it was a it was a private hired location, and mm. um, specifically for this film. So, like, how did you come by it? Also, um, yeah, what was it like, etc. Um, unfortunately, the location just dropped into my lap. Um, unfortunately, a family member had the location for a month before their rent ran out, and they weren't sat there. And this script was never designed for this location. My original script was larger budget um loads of different areas and what came around from that was then i went to sam and i was like i've got this location i've got the script um let's alter it and sam really really helped with changing it to fit to this location but yeah in all honesty it just fell into my lap it's a beautiful mansion in itchener um by the harbour a very old and it's kind of look I'm kind of outdated as well, but that's just fit it so nicely. And somehow this film has come together so well <laughs> <laughs> me and, from uh, what it was. <laughs> me and Ryan actually, before uh, lockdown was called, we actually went up to the house and checked Scudded it out. Scudded it out. Mm. Mm. And it was, it was so cool to be able to see this place and take all the photos and then think about that story and go, okay, let's apply it to that now. Well, yeah, I suppose for you, it helped with your shot list then. Oh, big time. Yeah, yeah, because like, you'd be able to reference it and stuff and just get it right even though I kind of by the end of the shoot threw the shot list out the window right? I'm, going, I'm going to try this let's try this and it worked but it was still yeah it was the house just gave you options to be creative mm. reflections like yeah, that beautiful so, glass dining yeah, table yeah yeah, yeah it was just ways to go okay how can I shoot this shot in a different way by using reflections by using mirrors and I love shit like that I love working with uh, mirrors and being able to 
see something that's a basic image but it's manipulation you're not watching it as directly you know yeah. there are a few times we had trouble with that because obviously you can see the camera in reflections of things mm -hmm. quite often and, and so we've, we've had to like watch the footage back every single night um, before we before we went to bed uh, just to check that everything we, we couldn't see a, a camera and um, you know watch it on a bigger yeah. screen or a boom yeah, or a boom, or, or you know, yeah, like. exactly. There's so many things that can Variables. go wrong with mirrors and, and reflective surfaces, but um, uh, yeah, and anything we found, we just reshot the next day, and it was mm. all good. Um, so yeah, touching on the the actual house, from my experience in seeing it, and like what you said, Sam, the scouting is with Jack's character. Jack's character basically inherits it from his grandfather. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And because of the way that the house is, it's very old. It kind of, for me, gives me a very 1700s kind of feel with the, the way that the roofs and stuff come down. Mm, yeah. And early 1800s. And that just added to the sort of ghostly element, of premonitions yeah, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, and, and especially the way that it's designed. Because when you go into the living room, the living room goes from front to back. So you mm. can play around with the front windows as well as the back windows etc mm -hmm. and and yeah i just thought that that was really cool that you could it was sort of beautifully laid out for a film mm -hmm. it was just yes. a really perfect location in that regard a load of keep creepy cupboards mm. and stuff as well it also has been out in the country and as town folk it's a very rare opportunity to just well it's scary at first because you're like i can't hear anything i'm trying <laughs> to sleep and there's nothing to distract me what's going on but after a while, you're like, actually, this is beautiful. This is lovely. You can Except see the from stars. The and the neighbours <laughs> and the drillers. And there were those noises. Yeah, but that was all during the day when we're yeah. trying to shoot things, not when we're trying to sleep. The, the typical <laughs> times that you expect it to happen. So, guys, can you just tell me a little bit about your characters, Jack and Bella? Do you want to start? You, you, you start. Uh, you start. <laughs> so, my character, Lily, is... Um, I purposely made her that she was just a very normal girl who meets this man and they have quite a healthy nice relationship but um this thing start to grind on her but overall she's just normal is the best way i can put it um a little bit like myself so i feel like i've kind of cheated that and i'm just playing myself <laughs> um well compared to your last role i suppose it's a little bit different yeah i, I wanted a stronger character this time someone who will say what's on her mind but at the same time, respects her husband maybe a little bit too much in that. Yeah, degree. she's a bit of a trad wife in some ways. Wasn't yeah, she? like yeah, she did. Uh, you know that kind of that kind of attitude towards things. Yeah. Well, I think also like it's not about the vulnerability of it, you know. Mm. And that's what obviously the last film in reference to acting with Una, she was very vulnerable. Yeah. And you wanted to have someone that could just not stand up for herself essentially yes. I think with acting as well it's very much that because she's aspiring to be an actress she's very single minded in her goal so she's willing to push the boat out even if it means putting herself in jeopardy because yeah. this character doesn't really have that same vibe Yes, it's the typical horror film of having someone that you can relate to and then be put through a horrible experience mm. but I think one of the other things was we, we made the characters religious yeah. they're Christians yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that obviously was particularly with my character because he, he was. I mean, I, I'm I'm still a bit confused about what his actual job was. He was something in the church where he went to conferences and did speaking things and like, it's and obviously Christian got celebrity. He got money <laughs> from it somehow, and he had uh, his wife transcribing his sermons for him. It, it was all very, but I, you know, I think that that was like a big aspect of their lives and. Um, we sort of we we played into that quite heavily and that sort of like yeah they they had a nice relationship but i still think there was something wrong about it all there was there? always like, this underlying was, tone yeah the, the religion for them i found was kind of their business as well um they weren't the standard um characters you see in horror films where they're so religious for them it was their business yeah and that was how they worked as a duo yeah they weren't they weren't particularly sort of um I don't know, particularly... Uh, well, they, they weren't were quite rule breakers, yeah. weren't they? They weren't, like, goody-goodies. Mm. They were just... Hipster Christians. <laughs> yeah. uh, I would probably say it's a little bit more of a, like, a modern type of Christian, like... Yeah. In this new sort of... Well, a new generational kind of Christian yeah. that yeah. is 
become a bit more modern through the times, but Millennial still has districts. their yeah, but still I, has their faith. I think you know, even when you've got these people that are, that, that pretend to be very goody goody, there's certain things that they'll break the rules on, or they'll yeah. decide selectively where they can be bad or but where not they can. You in know. terms of sinning, mm. no, sometimes I, I, I yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, everyone's more complicated than ever just being sort of, you know, the exact like thing that they... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, I do think that they they revel in that a little bit, don't they? Like yes. the naughtiness. <laughs> Definitely. So, what would you say, individually, guys, would be your favourite part of the film? Whether it be the film in process, for yourself, Sam, a particular shot or sequence, um, or... A particular scene that you think is going to be really, really good. I think, uh, as far as you said, like with shots and stuff, there were some challenges to try and do things very differently to what I would usually do, and to explore. Like there was one bit towards the end of the film. I might describe what happens in the film, but the usual way of how how I structured the shot list was like, all right, it's going to be like I don't know, fifteen shots, and we'll keep cutting to this, this, this to give all the, the like the action of it. And then when we had done the, the first scene before it, and it led towards it, I just kept looking outside and I thought, these windows, I can see everything. So why don't I just run past the action and just follow the action through the house rather than cutting to different shots? And, um, and I kept thinking, oh, that's gonna be really difficult without some sort of steady cam or any sort of stability. How's it gonna look inside? How light will it be? But it was like, fuck it, give it a go. And we did, and we tried it a few times, and I was really happy with it. And it was something just, I don't know, it's just its just a different way to do that particular kind of scene from what you usually see by just mm. taking you away from it. Almost like a neighbour listening into something they shouldn't be listening into. Mm. Yeah, I feel like with that action as well, like in that scene, it's... Um it just keeps with the action rather yeah, than yeah. splitting it up and seeing like little bits and then you have to think about so many transitions when you're shooting it and the editing to make sure that yeah. it can all be as tight as possible whereas just seeing it all through and um, quite a lot of it is like little one shot kind of moments mm. and so I, I think it will like stitch together that scene will stitch together really nicely and, and the yeah. smoke machine that was yeah. great that worked really nicely oh yeah that was a lot of fun I love playing smoked with smoke machine smoked out the whole entire place amazing <laughs> if someone had a come pad luckily we're off the beaten track a little bit but if someone had a come pass with the gels and stuff we had yeah. up like, you know, what red lights <laughs> with report. smoke in the window <laughs> <laughs> do any of you guys have like a, a particularly favourite part I don't know oh. It's hard to sort of like single out a part. I mean, I've, I've really enjoyed, play I, I love playing, like I said earlier, um, playing villainous and the sort of nastier characters. Um, but I think, I think sort of the thing that I think was the, the best thing about this film was the way that we all worked together and we all collaborated and, and you know, it was very, um, you know, we decided on things there and then when we were like, oh, well, that, that actually works, that's really cool. You know, we, we added to it and, and came up with new ideas during the during the scenes and stuff. And, and I think that's, uh, yeah, it just made, made it, it made it kind of special in some ways. We yeah. got to put all of a bit of us into it and that, that, that felt nice. <laughs> um, I, in terms of favorite scenes, I agree with Sam, that's my favorite scene in the entire film. And it's also the camera work, but also the sound of it. So it was chosen that you recorded it outside. Yeah. And it allowed for this incredibly heightened scene in between. Because sometimes emotion, when it's so strong on screen, can come across as kind of fake or a bit over the top. And with this, because it's behind the glass, it's just, it's just an insane scene. Um, you're completely with the characters and it's managed to, as you said, reduce a 15 shot scene. Mm to such a short moment but you're like what yeah <laughs> so, and it feels bit. so real doesn't it it, mm. feels, it feels really real seeing it through that glass see I, I think well I, just to give you guys a bit of context I was only on the set for three of the five days um, but I think one of the particular scenes that I really liked was what we did on Thursday night and um, I don't know if you were freezing, Bella, but when we did that transition into the premonition, which is already on the film, like scene seven, I think it is, um, 
yeah, th just that whole makeup and the aesthetics of it. It was very haunting of Hill House. It was yeah. stuck in my mind. <laughs> Funny story. Before about you'd that. say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny story is my mum actually went onto Facebook in the middle of the night and yeah. she came across that and it freaked her out so much she couldn't get back to sleep. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so it's like, oh, it's like, oh, that's all right. <laughs> Serves a right for going on the social media in the middle of the night. <laughs> I think that photo is circulated. I don't know if it's on the Trash Arts page just yet. I think, yeah, Katie uploaded it um, mm. last night, Thursday night. There's so much gruesome makeup in that entire film. Yeah, she did an amazing job, Katie. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was the things we worked with Katie for nearly, what is it, nearly four years next year. And um, it's always been great to try and offer her something that's a bit of fun. Because I think all makeup artists want to create monsters. They want to create mm. something that's a bit more elaborate than just going, all right, their own stab wound like, tears, stab wound Take on it as well. Yeah. Your own unique sort of personality mm. in it. And that's mm. it. She's incredibly collaborative in that sense, especially as you were taking over, uh, as in Bella, because I'm just looking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you took over with the design of what you wanted them to look like, so you guys kind of collaborated mm. strongly on that. And the looks were awesome. They're all very individual, and it was, it was nice. It was, it was like, yeah, it was just, it was a, a case of everything going well, but also it was a fucking nightmare of a lot of fucking work. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And we, we did nothing else but the film work. Like, we, we, we realised we hadn't watched TV, we hadn't, like, There was no just, internet, was there? I mean, yeah, other than the odd sort of, like, conversation here and there, it was just mm. constantly on. 12 hour days. Yeah, yeah. just want to say that. Then with the reviewing and then the sitting down and unwinding, it was doing like 3, 4 a.m. endings yeah. of this. <laughs> Thing is, because again, we were, we were lucky because it was the winter and we most of it was set at night time. So we always had that point where we go, OK, from 5 p.m. we could just go through all the mm. scenes over and over and over again. We, we don't need to be waiting till late, like senseless, where we had to wait until 10 p.m. for it to get dark. Because that was in home. summer. Yeah. Mm. We, we, and you'd still have more of a limitation that way because night time was shorter. Yeah. For us, night time was a lot longer, and fortunately, we didn't have to go into the air yet. However, the limitation on that was we had to get a lot of shots done quickly due uh, to yeah, the closing. Oh, yeah, because it was the daytime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, guys, just to summarise, is there anything else you'd like to sort of mention, say? Just, I'm really tired. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, no, I don't want to say anything else. I just want to sleep. We've literally come <laughs> from set to record the podcast so <laughs> I'm excited to see what people think of it obviously there's now the editing process and it's going to, there's, a, there's a long process this is just mm. very much an opportunist film and we're very lucky that we got to do it because I know there's a lot of filmmakers who wanted to be able to film right now and were set to right now and things unfortunately that couldn't come together because of the lockdown and things like that and I, I feel complete sympathy towards that so I just feel kind of lucky if anything, I feel lucky that we got the opportunity in the first place. And the fact that I'm really, really happy with the stuff we've shot and the performances mm -hmm. and all those elements kind of makes me go even more lucky <laughs> rather than going pride. It's, it's more like just feeling, yeah, a hell of a lot of luck. Yeah. I think like you two, uh, Bella and Sam, you, uh, you did such a wonderful job producing this film and it was like really great to be a part of, so like, yeah, Aww. it was fantastic. It, it felt like you two always knew what you were doing and sort of, um, I mean, other than certain times where like difficulties were coming in, but you know, you guys were always on it and you guys were always sort of knowing exactly what you wanted to get in the scene. Um, and it made it very easy for me to sort of light it and to act in it, which is good. And Ryan was pretty decent at Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and, and actually, <laughs> yes, there was loads of times that you jumped in and like, like the, the, yeah, I'm not going to say I'm specifics. Not, I'm not trying but to get you to blow my own horn here. <laughs> to help. <laughs> As a group, we collaborated so well. Yeah. Um, I do. Th this is my first ever film I've wrote. Um, I'm so proud of it and I'm so proud of how well we all worked together to do this shoot really should have taken like three weeks Yeah. and we were doing such long days getting them done everyone was so closely knitted and working together that it was only taking two or three takes Yeah. if even that we're all going for the same end goal really. yeah everyone was on the exact same page um, yeah brilliant well the brilliant thing shoot. is is you just know that if you don't 
just get it right and focus then mm. you're going to be doing this for a, a long time and then you're going to have to push something else onto the next day which is then just going to make, make the next day longer mm. so like you you've kind of you're forced into like being i've got to do this i've got to get this right i've got to like you know focus yeah. on what i'm doing and considering it was a, a, a shoot over the course of five days and there was only one major hiccup which was on the last day um, which still could work out fine when we review the footage. That's kind of a testament to how well it kind of ran. Even on the days where we thought the weather was going to be a lot worse, the weather held off and it was fine, and then we'd get the outside scenes done. Like, I think that was really cool. Mm. We got lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of humble pie, we got lucky. And and it's good to feel impressed with ha the fact that, you, that we did make the film. Mm. In tried lockdown. To, yeah. 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 <clears throat> And yeah, it's cool. It's cool. So guys, hope you enjoyed this week's podcast. A little bit different, but yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Want to say a special thanks for, to Bella coming on to the show, giving us her insights in the film that she wrote. Big congratulations. Thank you for having me. That's all right, not a problem. Um, guys, please check out our Indiegogo page. Uh, we're looking for support to basically raise some funds so we can get acting and uh, decline on a festival run. Also, drop a like, leave a comment, and um, please subscribe, hit the big red button, and uh, also hit the notification bell so you can get notified with everything Trash Arts, and check out our website, new content will be going up again soon, and that's www.trasharts.co.uk. Other than that, guys, peace, and Trash Arts take out. Ta-da. Time to go to sleep. <laughs>